Now that you've collected data from the Gecko video, it's time to use a statistical test to see whether the differences in the numbers between the two different groups are due to chance or they're significant. To do that, we're going to use a statistical test called the chi-squared test. This is how the chi-squared test is written in your lab manual. Now, before we unpack what that means, I'll just say that when you do this, you'll get a statistic, which is an arbitrary number. You're going to compare that number to a bunch of other critical values and see whether or not it falls in a range that suggests that your data is due to chance or the differences are significant. So let's go back to this equation and try to unpack what we're seeing here. The summation symbol means you're adding up all of the treatment groups. In this case, you have two treatment groups. You have the dark group and you have the light group. Remember, each one of these intervals on the left, these are treatments. But you're testing two groups, the group of light and the group of dark. And what you want to know is whether or not the total in the dark group and the total in the light group are significantly different. Another way of writing this is x squared, which is your chi-squared statistic, is equal to the total number of dark minus the expected total. You square that over the expected total. And remember, this is the expected total if there was no difference between the two groups, if they were the same. So in this case, the expected total would be 20 and 20. That would be expected if there was no preference between the two sides. Since this is a summation, now we're going to add the same equation, but done for the light group. The total light minus expected total squared over expected total. Let's plug in these numbers for this example set and then find our critical value. So our total dark was 19, our expected total was 20, and we're going to square that over 20 plus our total number of light, which is 21, minus our expected total, squared over 20. 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 equal to 0.05 plus 0.05. So our critical value is 0.1. Remember, this is an arbitrary number that we're going to compare to a lot of other values to see whether it falls within a range that would suggest that this data is either due to chance or significant. Let's take a look at that table. Here's a table with the critical values for the chi-square test. Now our critical value is 0.1. To find your critical value, you first find your degrees of freedom on the very left. In this case, since we only have two treatment groups and the degrees of freedom is the number of treatment groups minus one, our degrees of freedom is only one. If we had four treatment groups, then our degrees of freedom would be three. That would be the treatment groups minus one, and so on and so forth. But since our treatment groups are only two, our degrees of freedom are one. So let's look at the values for a degree of freedom of one. And those are all going to be on this line here. Our value is 0.1. So our value is somewhere around here between 0.8 and 0.5. This falls within a range where the differences are insignificant. Now when it says hypothesis is supported, what it means is the null hypothesis is supported. So this value, 0.1, would suggest that in this data set that I made up, the differences between the two groups are likely due to chance. And you can see that 19 and 21 are pretty close to 2020, which are the values that we know they would be if there was no difference between the two groups. 
Now what you're going to do is use your own data and find your own critical value and evaluate whether you're going to accept or reject the null hypothesis. And remember, the null hypothesis is that there's no significant difference between these groups. If you find your critical value in this range, well, that would suggest that your null hypothesis is not supported. That is, the differences are not due to chance. If the differences are significant, that would support your alternative hypothesis. In this case, it would be geckos prefer to rest on a darker substrate. If you look through your lab manual on pages 11 through 16, there are some other ways of explaining the chi-square test that might be a little easier to follow. This is the way that I remember and apply the chi-square test.